This week, we'll discuss one of the new features in the most recent release of MetPy, which is some enhanced METAR parsing. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to point out that MetPy 1.1.0 has been released and is out in the wild for you to install and use. There are some nice new features in MetPy 1.1 that we'll talk about over the next few weeks, including some really exciting declarative plotting upgrades, but also the METAR parser has been enhanced. So now it can better handle some of the more oddball codes and remarks, and it will do visibility, which is very important. Oftentimes we want to know what the visibility is. And so I want to show that in action this week, and we're going to make a map in a, a different projection than we normally do. Okay, so in our notebook, this is going to be very similar to our other METAR MetPy Mondays. We're going to import the TDS catalog object. And then we're going to create an instance. And it's going to point to the threads test server because currently that is the only place where you can get these text products. So threads-test.unidata.ucar.edu slash threads, catalog, NOAA port, text, metar, catalog.xml. All right, so what we're going to do is get one of the older data sets because well, right now visibility is actually pretty good across the country, which isn't great for looking at how the visibility parser does. So I'm going to get the 10th data set, which will be the 10th from the oldest, so about a month ago. And remember, we have to download that file still currently. And if we look at the name, uh, this is from the 17th, yes, so just almost exactly a month ago. From metpy.io, we're going to import parse metar file. And then we're going to use that to create a data frame. Parse metar file. And we'll pass it ds.name, which is the name of the file that we had downloaded onto disk. And that parcel will crunch for just a few seconds here. And then we'll have our data frame. So if I look at the head of that data frame, and we scroll over some. All right, we've got our remarks, our air pressure, but what about visibility? Well, visibility is here in this column, though these numbers look rather odd. So what we need to do is look at the units attribute, df.units. And if we go down and find visibility, we see that visibility is in meters, which is not how we typically think of visibility. We normally think of visibility in miles or nautical miles. So we need to change that while we're doing our plot. But first, let's go ahead and turn that data frame into some united arrays. And to do that, we're going to use the handy tool, pandas data frame to unit arrays from metpy.units. So for metpy.units, import pandas data frame to unit arrays. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and pare down my data frame a little. We're only interested in visibility here. So before I lose all that pandas functionality, I'm gonna use drop in a, Tell it my subset is visibility. And we'll go ahead and specify how equals any because we might want to take this script at a later time and update it to make full station plots. In that case, we'd want to add air pressure, air temperature, dew point, wind speed, wind direction in here as well. Okay, now that we've done that, and already reduced our data frame size, let's go ahead and make this some unit arrays. So pandas data frame to unit arrays. 
data frame and the column units are, oh wait, we didn't get the units attribute because what happened to it? If I try right now for df.units, let's just see what happens. We get an attribute error. So we did this in last week's MetPy Monday, but I was afraid that we maybe glossed over it a little too much as to why. Once you use pandas data frame to unit arrays, we take that data frame and strip everything away. We're returning a dictionary of unit arrays. So that units attribute just goes away. And now we no longer have any access to it. So what we need to do before we use pandas data frame to unit arrays is save that information off in a variable. I'm going to call it unit info. So I'm going to go back up in my notebook, rerun the parse metar file. And remember that takes a couple seconds. This is one of those tricks that you might not think about and one that might be a little confusing. And in fact, you see, wait, we're still getting the same problem. Well, as it turns out, we're dropping that attribute again when we use drop in A. So what do we need to do? We need to move this cell up. And we'll try one more time. Again, this is just one of those issues that until you've run into it a few times and know what's going on, it can be really confusing and frustrating. Okay, so now we finally have df as a dictionary where the key is the name of the variable and the value is a united array. All right, so there's a little bit of a struggle, but we got here. Now we're ready to make a map. So we got all of our normal Cartify imports. Cartify coordinate reference system. Cartify.feature. Matplotlib. And now we're ready to make our plot. You know, we always use the Lambert Conic conformal in these videos and these examples. It's a really nice looking plot, but I thought we'd do something a little different. We're gonna use a Miller projection, which if you're an XKCD fan, uh, we know that, uh, well, Miller and Mercator are projections that if you're not really that into maps, I'm sure you've seen this projection before and we'll see how it looks different than a Lambert Conic conformal. Now, of course, each projection has its own purpose and you'll choose based on where you're working and what you're interested in preserving. Are you interested in preserving bearing or are you interested in preserving area? And it's quite a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. So we're gonna put our bounds in, go ahead and make a figure Use the add subplot method. Now I normally like using plot.subplots, but since we need to specify a projection, we have to use add subplot. Set our extent by unpacking bounds. And those bounds are in Latin longitude, also known as plot curie. Add our features. We'll add a coastline. And we'll make that have a line width of one. And states with a line width of a half. Make our scatter points and grab a handle. We have the longitude, the latitude, our X and Y. I'm going to color by visibility. And I'm going to convert that because we're normally interested in visibility in miles.
the transform is going to be CCRS Placree. I'm going to use the CIVIDIS color map. It's a nice color map that gets uh, darker, more blue, which looks great for showing low visibility and it's much lighter in the lower end of the color map. Use some pretty large points. Minimum visibility is going to be zero miles. We can't have visibility less than zero. Maximum 10. If it's over 10 miles, we're generally not that interested. And I'll make the point slightly transparent because these big points are going to overlap. And finally, I'll add a color bar, shrink it down a little bit, and I'm going to add a label visibility in miles. And we make our plot. And there we go. So we can see at this time we've got some low visibility that's uh, in the, well, let's call it the Iowa and uh, northeastern Missouri area. But the rest of the country wasn't too bad, though there were some isolated pockets of low visibility uh, down here across the southeastern part of the country. So you can make your plot in any unit you want. You just have to be a little bit careful of things that might overlap. For example, we've talked about uh, millibars being millibarns if you just use MB. But we could change Well, that didn't do what we thought, right? So we're not nanometers, we're interested in nautical miles. Well, as it turns out, nautical miles isn't the magic either. But if we go to NMI, that turns out to not be nanomiles, but indeed nautical miles. And that was fixed in an issue a while back in Pint. And now we have a chart in zero to 10 nautical miles. I hope that you found this useful and that you'll explore MetPy 1.1 as we continue to look at its new features over the next few weeks. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.